So the TLDR is if you're looking for some kind of plug and play alternative to any of the common home security cameras and camera systems you can find on Amazon or any other big box store, then this video is not for you um, as a tutorial. If you find it interesting, that'd be my guess. But um, if your primary concern is like customizability, uh, personal data protection, things like that, owning your tech completely, then this might interest you and may be useful. So if you're still watching at this point, let's get into it. So to start, why did I personally want a home security camera? Well, for the same reason most people want one. Um, the neighborhood that I live in has about 100 homes in it, so it's kind of medium sized. It's pretty remote. It's on a country road and its entrance is set back from that country road such that you can't see any houses from from that country road. Um, and the next closest neighborhood is several miles away. And the neighborhood is surrounded by dense forest. So, and across the past several months, there's been some weird activity in the neighborhood. Cars that are just sitting around that people don't recognize at weird hours. Um, people allegedly trying to break into people's vehicles and whatnot. So that's not great. Um, whether or not that's suddenly become a common thing, I have no idea. Or, you know, it'll just regress to the mean and it'll go back to being extremely quiet. Who knows? But I just ultimately just wanted a set of eyes for when I'm not at the house because neither me or my wife work from home permanently. We do from time to time. Um, but not all the time. And we do have a ring camera on the front door, but it's quite restricted based on the, the layout of my front porch, I can really only see, can't even see my mailbox, I can see the sidewalk down to the road and then maybe 10 or 15 feet in either direction. So not a lot of visibility unless someone is at my door. And even then we don't pay 20 bucks a month forever in order to be able to access those videos later. We can only see a live feed. So, so why did I decide to build one rather than buying one? There's a few reasons. The first of which is that I felt pretty confident I could build one that could at least reasonably compete with an off the shelf solution. Another reason is that I already had a computer that could serve as a good home server uh, to dump the videos to from the um, camera. Excuse me. And I was also concerned about my data being on some random cloud server for other people to see. I don't know what security stuff looks like at Ring or whatever. And I'm not showing, you know, I'm not walking naked in front of my camera, but even still. Um, it's my data and if I can reasonably have complete ownership over it, then I'm going to. And there are some plug and play solutions that allow you to self host, but it seems to be that if, if those plug and play solutions are allowing you to stream to your phone, then that feed has to go somewhere, probably some company's server, which again, is a problem for me personally. Um, and the final reason is just that it seemed fun, which is, you know, maybe enough, good enough reason on its own to, to embark on all this. Um, setup and cost. For the home server, I'm using something I already had, which was a Lenovo M710Q with 128 gig SSD. That was about 70 bucks on eBay. Raspberry Pi Model 4B with eight gigs of RAM, 85 bucks, eBay. Waterproof Pelican case, 20 bucks, eBay, um, sorry, Amazon. Um, a decent USB-C to C cable, 10 bucks, Amazon. I prefer Anchor brand. I use mostly Anchor for power bricks um, and high wattage power bricks and cables. 1080p Logitech webcam, 65 bucks. An extension cord just for this, 10 bucks. Out the door, about 270, 280. Uh, the webcam was expensive, but it does do 1080p with auto exposure and auto focus. Um, it ended up being way overkill, but I'll get into that in a minute. For some more context, I used a lightweight free piece of software called Motion, uh, which is Linux native. Works for me because the home server runs Ubuntu server and my computer runs Ubuntu desktop. So it uh, works seamlessly in that respect. Uh, Motion's surprisingly customizable, and generally speaking, I've been pretty satisfied with it. Um, at this point, I think most, if not all, of my problems have stemmed from other things, not the video capture software itself. 
As far as problems go, to be clear, I made a bunch of these changes at the same time, so I can't tell you with a high degree of confidence which ones solved my problems and which ones didn't. Um, so the first problem was land connectivity. All of this requires a, a router which is capable of assigning static IPs within your LAN in order for the Raspberry Pi to talk to your server um, and vice versa, as well as being able to SSH into the server and pull videos to my local computer. Um, for whatever reason, the Pi defaulted to 2.4 gigahertz, which was throttling uh, video streaming. Um, I forced it to use 5 gigahertz. And I don't have a Wi-Fi extender, so even though line of sight as a crow flies is um, maybe 25 feet from a router to the camera, um, it still had significant uh, signal loss. So that in the beginning caused a lot of failed and corrupted video saves. Running Ethernet uh, for PoE would have been a nightmare and it's kind of out of the question. I have no idea what kind of person wired my house, uh, but they should probably be jailed. I don't know who runs Cat5 under insulation. So problem number two is weather and water. I'm in the deep south. Between ventilation and being waterproof, I chose the latter. Um, it is summertime still a little bit. It's raining quite a bit, sometimes very heavily. Um, I have a sm very small heat sink on the CPU itself for the Pi, but after a full day of running constantly, it gets almost concerningly hot, uh, despite being in shade most of the day. So if it was in direct sun all day, um, even if ambient outside is 80 degrees, it's probably going to be 150 plus in the in the container, the, the case itself. Um, but it did rain hard a couple days already and I had no problems. So at least I'm getting something out of this engineering trade-off. Uh, the waterproofing solution itself is kind of janky. The Pelican case itself has a gasket but I had to drill a hole out for power. So I did that and then I put silicone around that opening and then I silicone the connection from the USB-C to the power brick and then I silicone the power brick to the extension cord. So it looks ugly. I'm probably gonna bury it to be honest. Um, so the lawnmower and weed eater and stuff doesn't get caught on or someone trips and also just cause it looks ugly. And then the other problems was kind of space. The camera cable, well, the webcam cable, ca the webcam cable is I think three feet long. I had to bunch it all up and zip tie it, which made for even less breathing room in, for the CPU. But it definitely at least looks better than just leaving it dangling out of the case, because that's another hole I would have had to silicone, and that would have been not great. Problem three was the camera itself. Like I said, it was way overkill. Uh, while trying to improve uptime and reliability, I ended up down resing it to 10 frames per second from the maximum capable of 30 and downscaling 1080p to 640 by 480 Which I think is fine for a security camera, but it's obviously a very far cry from HD, especially if you want to look at something full screen after the fact. And on top of that, I had ChatGBT write a simple shell script to locally buffer videos on the Pi after they're recorded and then stream them to the server rather than trying to record or stream to the server as it's recording, which is very um, CPU and RAM intensive as well as just clogging up um, my home network. And if that write fails, well, then it's just lost forever because it wasn't cached or buffered anywhere. Um, out of the box, the camera was quite heavy and beefy, shockingly so to be honest. It took some effort, uh, but with a YouTube tutorial, I was able to remove the mount, which I think is made out of metal for some reason. I don't know why. The camera itself weighs 50 grams. Um, and I also removed most of the camera housing with a Dremel, uh, which is maybe the best tool ever. And that was, But that was mostly for the purpose of saving space uh, within the case because it otherwise absolutely would, would, would not have fit. But it also had the unintended consequence of making the indicator LEDs extremely obvious for when the webcam is running, it has four blue LEDs, two on each side of the lens. And at night, that would glare, that would reflect off of the case, the Pelican case, and it would wash out any video. So I just put silicone on, over the uh, LED lights, which seems fine. Um, 
The auto exposure is fine on the camera. Again, I'm, I ended up not using its full range just because, again, there's another trade-off between exposure, graininess, and detail, things like that. Um, but low light capability in general is nothing to write home about. I suspect that's probably the case for most cameras that either don't have extremely slow shutter rates, therefore it's gonna make any video blurry, or massive sensors, which this obviously doesn't have. I don't even think it's, it's not even micro four thirds. It's probably not even the same size sensor um, that's in this, which I think is a centimeter square. I'm not certain. Um, so that's I, a, a real nighttime darkness, complete darkness solution. It's going to have to be infrared. I don't see any other way around that. Maybe that's for V2. Maybe V2 will be a lot cooler. And then there's longevity and usability of this whole thing. An entire day of running, it's been running three or four days now nonstop, produces about 250 video clips based on my settings. I record three seconds before, or three frames before the video starts, and I think 10 frames after or before the motion starts, and then 10 seconds after the motion ends. So that's 250 total. So your mileage is probably gonna vary. And that's about a gig and a half a day. So that would fill up 128 gig SSD in about three months. For now, I just prune stuff by hand, um, but I also had GPT write a shell script to pull all the files from the home server to my computer for viewing them rather than having to run a pain in the neck SCP command every single day and just one button and the terminal, which is nice. And of course the Raspberry Pi is running on a micro SD card, which in this case is Amazon Basics brand. Um, hard to say what real, uh, reliability is going to look like there. Uh, we're going into fall, so thermals might be less of an issue going forward, but uh, at 10 p.m. at night, the Pi CPU is still 120 degrees. It's 6 p.m. You know, we're in the end of September, it's 180 degrees. So who knows what it is at its peak? Maybe 190, 200 Fahrenheit. So it see, um, based on everything I could find, the Pi's don't throttle until about 175. But even then, I may break down and consider ventilation, which obviously would require putting a cover over the top of the housing for rain, but trade-offs, right? A lot, a lot of things to consider if you're gonna do this yourself. Uh, but at the end of the day, does it serve my needs in a reliable fashion? Yeah. Was it worth the effort it ended up requiring? I would say so, because you know, being fun, interesting learning experience, not super heavy. Once I get SSH set up on the Pi, I can put it outside and if problems are coming up, well, I can do all of that stuff remotely can restart the software remotely, reboot remotely, etc. You know how these things go. Uh, so a bit of a hump in the beginning, but after getting the physical thing sorted out and getting it mounted how I like, which, you know, not bad. Would I recommend doing this? Only if you want an excuse to build something and have a little fun, or your biggest concern is data privacy and owning your data start to finish. What I didn't talk about, to go back real quick, is how I set it up. I uh, have it under a magnolia tree so that it gets as much shade as possible. And then I decided that because I have to run power manually, um, I wanted to put it sort of at the end of my, just like two feet outside the corner of my garage so that I can see my entire driveway and a very, very large portion of the sidewalk, almost including the entrance of the neighborhood. So, you know, the, the field of view can only be so wide and I don't want an ultra wide angle lens because that makes stuff fisheye and kind of hard to see, things like that, which I don't love. I may consider doing another one in the future for the back porch, um, in which case I could add ventilation because it can be under the, you know, the ceiling, the roof. Otherwise, very happy with it. I'm very, very interested to see uh, what reliability is going to look like. If that ends up being interesting, I'll make an additional video and talk, you know, do kind of a post-mortem and see what happened and how many days it ran and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope this was uh, interesting or informative. 
hope you like my my uh, my janky jerry rigged camera. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.